welcome to another Metastock webinar. We are excited today that we are going to have Steve Bigelow uh, talking to us from Candlestick Forum about identifying big breakout price movement setups. Uh, he's go if you haven't heard Steve before, you're in for a treat. He has some great uh, insights into candlestick charting, uh, really one of the pioneers of candlestick charting in the, in the field. So we're excited to have him here with us. Um, I'm just, uh, before we get too far down the road, I'm just going to go and check, make sure everything's working. Um, but I wanted to say hello before I do that, and I'll be right back with you. side of the wall so I can make sure everything's set up over there so technically it looks like we're all set up just right near from the other side of the room so I'll check back with them in just a second uh, again my name is Kelly Clement welcome to today's webinar with Steve Bigelow uh, Jeff Gibby will be our host and uh, Steve Bigelow of course will be our presenter this evening talking about candlestick setups uh, specifically identifying big breakout price movements so we're, we're very excited about another webinar with Steve Again, Steve is uh, one of our most popular speakers. We're excited to have him here with us. So stay tuned, have questions ready. Steve's very good about answering questions. We'll have, be happy to pass those questions on to Steve. Um, I think that's the main things for just a moment. Let me go see if I can get hold of the other side of the wall and make sure everything's up and going before we get started. Be right back.
Okay, well, you can see the, uh, the timer there has hit zero, but we have not yet started. Uh, it looks like we're just a minute or two uh, from getting started, so I apologize for the delay. Um, it looks like we're just getting um, everybody into the room to be able to present. So I uh, had a few technical difficulties. Hey, it's always good to get those technical difficulties out of the way up front. Let me see if Jeff's trying to get hold of me to give me an update. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, almost. We're almost there, it sounds like. It sounds like we've just about got everybody in the room. So we are very, very close. I'll be right back. a party when uh, there's technical difficulties but it looks like we are all solved we are good to go so I'm gonna go ahead and get the start button going and enjoy today's webinar Software and techniques presented today should only be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. And that is actually no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of the software, any trading strategies, or any information provided in connection with the company. So there you go. Our guest tonight is Steve Bigelow. Uh, Steve, I'm going to go ahead and turn the presentation over to you, but I'm going to say a few things to you or about you, <laughs> just to introduce you. Uh, Steve, I consider a good friend of mine. We've been working together for well over a decade now. Um, his product uh, that, uh, that we've created with him is actually one of our most popular add-on products. It's called Candle Profit Systems. Uh, he's a great presenter. He's very, uh, he has some of the best jokes. And um, that's what I'm gonna say about you today, Steve. Steve, I can see your screen and it's coming through very well. Okay, you can see it. All right. Uh, and yeah. I can hear you. Okay, and I think right. aside from a little bit of a late start, things are going perfect. All so right. I'm gonna I'm gonna get out of the way. Okay. Welcome everybody. Um as Jeff was saying, we've worked together for quite a few years. And what I have discovered, well, I'll give you a little bit of my background. I came across candlesticks oh over three decades ago um by accident. So as I was learning candlesticks, I wanted to learn everything I could because the more I looked at the candlestick charts, the more it made sense. And the more I studied them, the more sense it made. And I finally realized that candlestick signals are just graphic depictions of what goes on in human nature. And it's all just common sense built into, uh, uh, built into a, a chart pattern. Oh, so the first thing I want to mention to everybody is if you have questions, ask them at any time. We're, we're not in any hurry. But the important thing that I want to point out is I know that there's tons of people out there that I ask, why aren't you using candlesticks? They're, they make so much sense. And the answer way back, even starting 30 some odd years ago, was there was too many of them, too many signals, and they didn't always work. And I kept thinking, well, if they didn't work, we wouldn't be looking at them hundreds of years later because the underlying factor has never changed. And that's human nature. It stays the same way <clears throat> time after time. So the uh, important factor I want to point out is that candlestick signals show us when there's been a drastic change of investor sentiment. And the signals tell us we want to start looking to see what 
what's happening, that something new is happening. And we call this our rare evaluation. If we see a breakout, first thing we do is we go and see what the news was that caused that breakout. So that becomes our alert. Secondly, we know when there's a breakout, there's now a drastic change of investor sentiment. It's going to produce some good price moves. So I always ask or state the rhetorical question, do you always get big moves on a candlestick signal? No. But what you're doing is you're putting yourself in situations where the probabilities of something happening where you are in a big price move are greatly in your favor. Now, the other thing I've discovered in recent years is there's a ton of information about candlesticks out on the internet. <clears throat> and so I looked at some of the, the, the stuff and I thought, wait a minute. They're showing stuff that works pretty well in candlestick analysis, but they don't occur often enough to spend your time and energy trying to learn them. So what I've discovered through the years was out of the 50 or 60 candlestick signals, there's only 12 that you need to know. The rest of them you might look at and become aware that they are signals, but you don't have to spend a lot of time learning what they do. The 12 major signals, which are these, basically six longs and six shorts, essentially produce 99.9% .9 of the signals and the uh, illustration, there's been a change of investor sentiment. So they all have specific uh, characteristics, like the doji opens and closes at the same level. And the Japanese rice traders gave them different names. The gravestone doji opens at the top, trades lower, comes back and closes at the top of the range. Looks like a graves or a dragonfly doji. Gravestone doji, the Japanese rice traders explained as the warriors coming out of camp, going into battle, getting beaten back into the camp by the end of the day, leaving their dead all over the field. That's the gravestone doji. But the important factor is it basically shows there's indecision between the bulls and the bears. This is very relevant for showing when a reversal or when a trend continuation is going on. So not only can you use the 12 major signals, but because Investor sentiment works the same way time after time. There's patterns that human nature produces. So essentially what we can do is take the elements of knowing there's been a drastic change of investor sentiment, seeing where there's a breakout, and knowing that we have a new trend. Now that new trend is what we call the T line, this line right here, which we'll get to in a minute. But if we see a breakout like this, notice how before this, this just traded nothing going on. And then something happened. Now we can see whether that something that happened is gonna warrant high potential. That's what we use as our rare process. Research analysis, reverse engineering, meaning if we see a breakout, we want to go back and find out what caused that breakout. Now, if it was a upgrade from somebody, that doesn't mean anything. All that is is a short-term change of supply and demand. If they are getting a product approved through the FDA, that's got a completely different uh, element. Now, candlestick signals are the graphic depiction of everybody buying and selling during a specific time frame. Once you learn those signals, now you have a very strong grasp for analyzing what might be going on in a price move. But the other element that most of us have, and I say most of us because I did, is letting our emotions dictate what we do on a trade. So we have what we call the T-line. The T-line is the eight exponential moving average, and it's got Fibonacci characteristics which basically says, if you see a candlestick buy signal and a close above the T-line, you can stay long until you see a candlestick sell signal and a close back below the T-line. Why is this important? Because what do most people do when they have a profit in a position? Man, 
I've got a profit. I better take my profits because if this turned around and went back to a loss, boy, would I look stupid. What the T-line does is acts like a natural support and resistance level of human nature, which makes a very strong combination. As long as you, after that buy signal, you don't see a sell signal and a close below the T-line, you can stay long until that occurs. Conversely, on the short side, if you see candlestick sell signals and a close below the T-line, you can stay short until you see a candlestick buy signal and a close above the T-line. Now, this works for any time frame. The definition of a candlestick signal is that it is the graphic depiction of everybody buying and selling during a specific time frame. This could be a one minute chart, a 10 minute chart, an hourly chart, a daily, weekly, or monthly. It still all looks exactly the same. So here is a very powerful truism. If you see a candlestick sell signal and a close below the T-line, you've got an extremely high probability that that trend is reversed. So if you've been long during that uptrend and it finally closes below the T-line after a sell signal, close it out. The probabilities have just gone against you. Same thing on the buy side. If you were short and you see a buy signal and a close back up above the T-line, it's time to cover that short position and or it's time to go long. There's a caveat to this. The caveat is the further away you move from the T-line, the higher the probability is going to come back and test it. Same thing on the downside. The further away you move from the T-line, the higher the probability is going to come back and test it. So knowing that, you start seeing reversal signals way down here. You start taking profits because you know at least the first target is coming up to this level. So on my chart, for those that aren't familiar with uh, my trainings, you've got the 200 and the 50 simple day moving average. The reason we have those on our charts is because every major money manager around the world uses those moving averages to make their decisions about their portfolio. A lot of people say, well, why don't you use the exponentials? Aren't they better? The answer is we're not using them to make our decisions. We're using them to see what everybody else's decisions were at those levels, what signals are forming. So when we can see pattern break or expectations, we can identify when the breakouts are likely to occur. Now, one of your strongest signals is the kicker signal. The kicker signal is very easy to identify. The last candle is a, opens here, closes here, creates a, that dark candle. The next time frame, which is usually a daily, it gaps up at or above the previous day's open and starts going positive. Basically, the investor sentiment has been kicked in the other direction. And the result of that is usually a very strong price move. We recommended, oh, we recommended here uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, recommended pet Q last week. Again, same scenario. They gapped it up, and this was based on earnings, produces a very strong price move. So I always tell people, this is not rocket science. You don't have to know formulas. You don't have to know numbers or anything. All you have to do is identify when there's changes of investor sentiment. We have the doji, which has the doji rule. The doji rule is the price will usually move in the direction of how they open after a doji. So if a doji means indecision, a series of doji means greater indecision. So what is our confirmation? We're in the oversold area. My stochastics are 12.33. I'm a swing trader, so my trades usually last on average, anywhere from two to 10 trading days. So I'm looking for the signals when they occur in the oversold area. The Japanese rice traders keep their trading philosophy very simple. If you see a candlestick buy signal in the oversold area and it confirms, the probabilities are pretty strong you're now in an uptrend. Same scenario on the sell side. If you see a candlestick sell signal 
in the overbought area, you're right now in a downtrend. That's not very difficult to understand. So all we have to do is learn what the signals look like. And that's, as I say, there's only six bullish and six bearish. The doji rule also is that the price will usually move in the direction of how they open after a doji. So you have a big candle, a doji, and a positive open. That tells us we're moving positive, which gives us another candlestick signal. We call this the doji sandwich. A big candle, a doji, a big candle. Usually this candle right here will be the same magnitude as this candle uh, prior to the doji. That becomes a very strong entry, uh, I'm gonna say a strong entry setup. So even if you're a day trader, that becomes a high probability uh, trade setup. This is what we call a slow curve. You can see the slow buildup of investor sentiment. Doji's right on the 50 day moving average. We look for these patterns because this is a buildup of investor sentiment that usually results in a high profit trade setup. And where is that breakout? Where everybody else is watching, right here at the uh, 200 day moving average. So if I'm watching this, I see it start trading positive, I'm buying. Now remember, we're looking for candlestick buy signals when stochastics are in the oversold area. Whoops, didn't want to do that. We're looking for pattern breakouts, usually when your stochastics are up in the overbought area. But the most important facet is we can identify patterns that tell us there's a buildup of strong investor sentiment. This is what we call the classic pattern. Classic pattern is a fry pan bottom. You can see the rounding bottom, not really doing anything. You couldn't trade this one way or the other if you wanted to. But what, would, what do we know about a fry pan bottom? When it starts coming out the other side, you're gonna get a strong price move. And so the analysis, once you know what the signals and patterns are, this is a doji gap up. That's your best friend signal which is a doji followed by a gap up. What do we want to see coming out of a fry pan bottom? A strong price move. So when they break through this level, it tells us they're breaking out of the fry pan bottom at a level everybody else can see right here at the 50 day moving average. Where do we think our next target's gonna be? Probably up here at the next resistance level. And it pulls back and look where it pulls back to. Right smack dab to the T line. Again, our T-line rule is, if it doesn't close below the T-line, we're still in an uptrend. Now we've got that next little uh, J-hook pattern, except this is a more defined J-hook. It's occurring at a level that everybody else is watching. So we can see the pattern setting up. We can be buying right here aggressively because we know that everybody and their brother that's watching this uh, stock is waiting to see whether it's gonna break out through the 200. And when it does, they start piling in. We just have the advantage of seeing what investor sentiment is doing, what type of patterns are developing at levels that everybody else is watching. All right, let's see, I've got my question. Yeah, if you have questions, feel free to ask them as we go along. This is called a bullish flutter kicker signal. This is even more, I wanna say exact, as far as entering a trade. Notice you had your dark candle. The next day they gapped up and did a doji. Not very decisive. However, it is a very strong alert because what do we know about the doji rule? The price is gonna move in the direction how they open after a doji. So if this opens positive after this setup, we can be buying immediately because the probabilities are it's gonna trade positive. And if it trades positive, we call this a bullish flutter kicker signal, because if you took this little flutter out, you essentially have a kicker signal that's gonna produce a very strong price move. This is what we're looking for. Patterns and the breakout level, which is usually about where the pattern started. 
So a lot of people say, well, shoot, this gapped up. I'm not going to chase it. We're chasing it because we know what the expectation is coming out of a fry pan bottom breakout scenario. So we just recommended this one. This was actually yesterday. It did kind of a doji day to day, but this is your classic pattern. A fry pan bottom and then kind of a J hook pattern. And then notice our doji rule, a doji gap up through the resistance level and did another doji. So what's our trading strategy? Well, we know there's a lot of bullish force coming in here. We want to see confirmation on a positive open. If it opens positive, we can be buying immediately because we know that force is still in progress because the doji rule says it's going to move in the direction how they open after the doji. So this is what I call observe the obvious. Look at our slow curve. Whoops, this is when to buy, not when to pay. Here is a what we call the McMuffin pattern. This is our morning star signal. It's a big candle, dark candle, then a doji. And then the next day does a bullish candle that closes more than halfway up that candle. It's very symmetrical. That's one of the 12 major signals, your, your morning star signal. Then you have your doji and then positive open, there's your doji sandwich. So we call this a McMuffin because it's a combination of your morning star and your doji sandwich or your morning sandwich. If this implies there's gonna be upside and we know the result of a doji sandwich is more upside, when you combine those two, you've got an extremely powerful um, trade setup. Whoops. So that last one we saw formed right on the 50. And notice there's our bullish harami. The bullish harami tells us the selling has stopped. And then we have a doji. It didn't open positive today, but it did a doji. We're just waiting for it to start trading positive to buy because now we have that wave one, wave two, J hook pattern, wave three. So essentially, because of the visuals and knowing what the signals tell us, we can essentially just uh, witness when the probabilities are now turning in our favor, oversold stochastics, a buy signal right on the 50 day moving average, what everybody else is watching, basically tells us when they were pulling back, this is where they decided to start buying and that's where we wanna start buying. So anytime we can see a strong signal, there's again, there's our kind of our bullish flutter kicker sig signal. There's some very simple trading patterns that human nature does. There's our best friend signal goes up through a perceived resistance level. What's normal human nature? They'll pull back to see if that resistance level is now gonna act as support. Now notice what they did. They gapped it up and did a bullish flutter kicker signal. Where do we expect our next price move to go to? Up here to the 200 day moving average. So this, again, it's not rocket science. This is just identifying what human nature does time after time. We are recommending this one today. Again, there's our classic pattern, a fry pan bottom. What do we expect coming out of a fry pan bottom? A strong price move. Then it pulls back and notice where it pulled back to, right smack dab to the T line. Now, when I say right smack dab to the T line, the relevance of that is nobody has the T line on their charts. So it's not like everybody's waiting to see what it does at the T line because nobody has it on their charts. The number of times that uh, it uses the T line as support is just more evidence of the T line being a natural support and resistance level of human nature. So why would we be buying on positive trading? Because we know wave one and wave three are using the same magnitude. So even if we miss this move, we can get ready to buy here knowing what 
what the uh, strength of that next price move is likely to be. So if you use the pattern breakouts, look at our doji right here where the pattern started, the fry pan bottom. And what's our doji rule? It's going to move in the direction how they open after a doji. So if they're open positive after that doji coming out of a fry pan bottom, what's our expectation? Nice strong price move. But, all right, any questions while I take a drink? There's a question. Doesn't that look like a scoop rather than a fry pan bottom? Not, no, not necessarily. We'll get to a scoop pattern uh, here in a little bit. A scoop pattern is going to have a very flat handle and then the scoop. Usually, scoop's going to be pretty quick. Again, this is a big rounding fry pan bottom pattern. So the doji rule, that even if you're, uh, not even, if you're a day trader, works very effectively. It allows you to see exactly when a pattern breakout is likely to occur. Again, there's our doji sandwich, a big bullish candle, you can see the trajectory of the fry pan bottom. You can see where the pattern breakout is. So there's your doji. So if you bought it that day or you're getting ready to buy, you know what your trading strategy is the next day. If it opens positive, you want to be buying immediately. Then you've got a strong price move for how long? Until you see a sell signal and a close back below the T-line. Can you explain, Monster, a cup? and handle is it one that we looked at already if yeah these are uh, powerpoints i'll have to look at a live chart um all right so this is what we call two plus two analysis but if you know what the pattern looks like, you know where the breakout level is, you could be buying on this day on the breakout because not only is it breaking out through the resistance level that started the pattern, it's confirming. And notice how this uptrend started. There's a doji followed by a little gap up, your best friend. That implies uh, there's, there's gonna be more upside. And if there's gonna be more upside, that's telling us that this level is probably going to be ready to break out. We're getting ready to buy. Overstock. Kind of your fry pan bottom, whipsaw, kicker signal. Anytime you see, or for, or anytime you see a, a gap up above the previous day's open, two things you want to do. One, if you were short, you want to close it immediately. And two, if you're ready to go long, you can buy immediately because logic says if this is a dark candle and they're gapping it up above the previous day's open, that's strong bullish evidence. You can start buying as soon as you see the buying coming in. So you can be buying here when everybody else is piling in up here. A trend kicker signal. Is a kicker type signal that's already occurred in the trend. And that usually implies more upside. So if we see that pattern breakout and then a trend kicker, we know that that trend is confirming. We still have a lot more upside in that trend, which we would expect because it's a fry pan bottom breakout. So when we see something like this, there's your kind of your fry pan bottom. There's your breakout area where the pattern started. So we could be buying right here. What is the first thing we watch for? We want to see what everybody's going to do when it hits a potential resistance level. In this case, it went right through. And what was it telling us? 
that our fry pan bottom trajectory is working, giving us this type of price move. So if we're breaking through the 50 with a strong buy pattern breakout, where do you think the next target's gonna be? What everybody else is watching up here. I think that's where it closed today. Uh, will a recording of this? Yes. Uh, Sylvain, uh, yeah, Jeff will. Yeah, Sylvain, we'll send out a recording within about an hour after we're done today. The opposite of a fry pan bottom is what we call a dumpling top. It's a bearish signal. And what do we expect coming out of a dumpling top? A strong breakdown. Now, that's the kind of the inverse classic pattern where you have a dumpling top, strong price move, and then it does a J-hook pattern. So even if you miss this move and you saw this pattern setting up, you would know what the calculation is for this move. About the same magnitude as this move right here. So remember, human nature works the same way time after time. All we were doing is identifying what human nature is likely to do. So this is a scoop pattern. Scoop pattern, you may not even pay attention to it until all of a sudden look at your dojis in the oversold area. Stochastic's starting to curl up. There's your doji sandwich, which implies there's more upside. And if there's more upside, Everybody else is saying, well, this is probably a resistance level. We're looking at it as a scoop pattern. There's your flat handle. There's your scoop. And what is your expectation coming out of a scoop pattern? A, sl a strong slingshot effect to the upside. And how long do you hold on to this one? Until you see a sell signal and a close back below the T-line. When do you get ready to sell? Remember, the further away you move from the T-line, the higher the probability is going to come back and test it. So the Japanese rice traders know what humans normally do. Where do most people buy? They buy exuberantly at the top. Where do most people sell? They panic sell at the bottom. That's why I became so good at candlestick analysis. Because before candlesticks came along, I was the worst investor in the world. I was that person buying at the top and selling at the bottom, and I was even a stockbroker for eight years. So when candlesticks came along and I could start seeing what, what was happening, basically the assumption was, who was buying down here? It's usually the smart money. Who's selling up here? It's usually the smart money. So I thought, well, shoot, I should get on the side of the smart money. If I'm selling down here, I just need to turn my trading strategy around 180 degrees and now start watching to be a buyer down here and a seller up here. You also have days like this. You see the best friend breakout. Should you be buying here, buying here, here, here? As a day trader or even a position trader, where would you be buying? Very simple because Candlestick signals work the same way time, on any time frame. You just flip over to your 10-minute chart. Say, well, they've gapped it up. I can be buying here. I can be buying here. Maybe I'm not buying here. Let's see what it does at the team. Well, I can be buying here. Then look what it did for the rest of the day. Really didn't sell off. So what that tell us about the end of the day? That we were going to probably have a candle that's closing up here near the top end of the range. Now we can decide whether we want to take profits up here or see how it opens the next day. So this is what, again, we call two plus two analysis. If we know a J-hook pattern is a pullback, usually right to the T-line area, and it starts back up, what is our assumption? Wave one and wave three are usually going to be the same. So if I took profits right here, look at our evening star signal gap down. That's telling me that it's time to take profits. It used to be, if I, uh, now it didn't used to be. I was going to say, if I happen to be lucky enough to take profits up here, 
I wouldn't buy back here because they weren't going to trick me and get me back in and then take it back down and take some more of my profits, whoever they may be. Well, now I know how human nature works, that if you're taking profits here and you see this pattern setting up, you can get ready for the next price move of this magnitude. This is even more defined, a more defined J-hook pattern. Look where they started taking profits, right here at the 200. That would have told us if we saw this, we would have had a safety stop right here because logic says if they hit this up here and then started trading back through the halfway point of this candle, they aren't going through. It's time to take profits. Now we can watch and say, well, look what we got going on here. There's our doji sandwich. It implies more upside. Let's see if it gets back to the 200. Well, when it does, what's that tell us? That if they open this positive, that's a more defined J-hook pattern because you can see where the resistance was and the breakout. We have wave one, wave two, going into wave three. Basically, what this boils down to is that every time we see a pattern set up, we know what the probabilities are of what the results of that pattern is going to be. Not because of some newfangled computer program, because the Japanese rice traders have studied human nature over 400 years, and that's what they've identified for us as going to be a high, prob or a high probability result. So knowing the signals, and again, you don't need to learn all 50 or 60. If you learn the 12 major signals, the doji followed by a gap up is your best friend signal. Now, why would we be paired for this? Because look where the dojis were showing, or showing up, down here in the oversold area. And remember what a doji represents? Indecision between the bulls and the bears. So you've had a downtrend, now you have indecision. Now what are we waiting for to see what the new decision is? Now, these are the type of patterns that you want to get stuck in. First of all, we call this your best friend because it's got two major aspects to it. One, the new trend is very high probability, a uh, high probability result. And two, the magnitude of the move is usually very strong because of the strength of that reversal. And once again, what keeps your emotions, and when I say your emotions, what keeps my emotions out of my trading, which most investors know their biggest bugaboo is their own emotions. Everything I have done in candlestick investing is oriented toward how do I keep my uh, emotions out of my trading decisions. So now I've got a very simple plan. There's a sell signal in the overbought condition. Before we put the T-line on our chart, I'd probably say, I I'm going to take profits because that looks like a reversal. And if it turns around and goes back up, I can always buy it back in. But I was usually taking that money and going someplace else. Now I know to sit patiently that if this had opened lower the next day and traded lower, we that's when we closed out. If we were going to stay long, what did we need to see? We needed to see it open positive and trade positive. So this is what keeps your, your rational decision making out of your trading and keeps you in good trades. The old adage is uh, that you want to cut your losses short and let your profits run. That is a uh, adage that you hear every money manager or every investment guru tell you to do but they never tell you how to cut your losses short and let your profits run. Candlestick analysis is very simple. If we see a candlestick buy signal, we're expecting an uptrend. So if the next day we bought and then it closed back below the halfway point of this candle, the Japanese rice traders say close it out. Because if this was the candle that told us the bulls were in control and the bears were able to close it more than halfway down that candle, the bears are still in control, close out the position. So these are the type of things we're looking for. That little breakout 
through a resistance level, putting us in situations where the probabilities are extremely high. We're now in a trade that there's new strong uh, bullish uh, indication that the bulls have taken control. Same thing on the bear side. There's your bearish best friend. Now, why would we get ready to take profits up here? For a couple reasons. One, the Japanese rice traders say, where do most people buy? They buy exuberantly at the top. When you start seeing gapping up in the overbought condition, get ready to take profits. Two, what was another indicator that we were in exuberant land? Look how far away you are from the T line. So if we had been long on a day like this, probably would have taken off half the position. The next day when it gapped down, we're closing it out immediately because of the doji rule. It's going to move in the direction of how they open after a doji. Same thing right here. A doji followed by a gap down, we close it out immediately. Or we start going short on these trades because what's the best friend signal tell you? There's still going to be a strong trend in that direction. If you're long and they gap it down, it used to be I'd sit here and say, oh, man, I was doing so well. Maybe they'll take it up one more time and let me out. What I've discovered is if you're in an uptrend and they're gapping it down, especially in the overbought area, there's only one thing you want to do. Close it immediately. That does a couple things for you. One, you've closed out of a bad trade. Two, I used to sit here and say, oh man, hopefully I'll, they'll, it'll go up, I'll, I can get out. But then it goes down further and I say, oh shoot, I should have gotten out when it opened. I can't close it now because what if it turns up now? It goes down here and I say, oh shoot, I said, no, nah, I can't sell it now. Where do I close out the position? Usually when it, you don't have any more time at the end of the day. Now I know you close it out immediately. That has that money back in, in your account. And more importantly, it frees up your mental processing. You're not sitting here trying to figure out what to do with a bad trade. You're out of the trade. Now you can say, wait a minute, this is a bearish kicker signal. Maybe I should be going short right away and getting my profits right back again. The message is one that's a little bit more hidden. They've gapped this up, opened here and closed here. That looks pretty ugly. But we call that the message because what was the message? The message was they gapped this up. There was a lot of new interest in this uh, trades position. So what do we do as candlestick investors? We wait to see when that profit taking's over, which happened the next day. Now this is what we expect because of that message, a strong price move uh, to the upside. We can, well, let's see, two plus two analysis is just witnessing where the strong signals are occurring. You can see there was a downtrending resistance level right here to the 50. Now you had a doji that went up through that level, didn't look very strong. But the next day when they open up positive, what's it telling us? We've got a doji sandwich breakout. It pulls back. Look where it pulled back to, right to the T line and did a bullish engulfing signal. Now what pattern do we see? Wave one, wave two, wave three of a J-hook pattern. Again, I try to emphasize the fact that when you're visualizing or witnessing the signals, it's giving you information telling you what's going on in investor sentiment that you can analyze much more accurately just because of the graphics. And then when you add another confirmation, the natural support and resistance level of human nature, that combination is going to constantly put you in positions that are that are going to be working in your favor. Whoops. Uh, uh, do you rely on daily chart for direction? Uh, yes. So even if I'm day trading, I want to know which direction I'm probably going to be trading uh, that day. And that works just as well on cattle, 
soybeans, the dollar, anything. If you can analyze what the daily direction is based upon the candlestick signals, now you're trading more than likely oriented toward that direction during the day. Now, here's the common sense element of candlestick analysis. You can analyze the markets, the indexes, just as easily as you can an individual stock. So if we can analyze the direction of the market, and then we can analyze which sectors are, let's say we have a, a bullish direction of the market based upon candlestick signals and patterns. Then we can scan to see which sectors are acting the strongest. And then we can go to those sectors and see which one of those, those stocks have the strongest signals. So we're basically putting all the stars in alignment um, again, keeping all the probabilities in our favor. So candlestick logic is putting all that information in where we can see what is likely to occur based upon a signal or a pattern. There's a little left-right combo. A left-right combo is a doji followed by a bullish engulfing signal. And where did it occur? Right here at the breakout level. So if it opened positive, confirming that signal, what did everybody else see? That they weren't resisting at the uh, uh, 50 anymore. So we can be buying right here, knowing that the probabilities are we're going to be in a strong price move. And I always put up that rhetorical question Do we, we always get big moves on a breakout? Definitely not. But we're putting ourselves in situations where the probabilities of being in those big moves are greatly in our favor. So not only does the candlestick signals tell us when to buy, but the simple logic of if you're moving too far away from the T-line and it opens here and starts trading up, when it's trading up here, what do we know about the T-line? It's way down here. And what do we know about human nature? It's going to come back and test that natural support level of of, of the T-line. So when we see this, still a bullish candle, but where's the place now to logically put your stops? Well, you might do it where it opened, which would basically be about the same level that it closed the night before, or the halfway point of this candle, and most definitely back below this level, because logic says if we're way up here in the overbought area, that far away from the T-line, we better have our safety stops in place because the probabilities are they're going to come back and test that level soon. So not only does it tell us when to get in, it tells us when to get out. Not only does it tell us when to set our stops to uh, for uh, profit taking. Again, what's our simple uh, analysis? You stay long until you see a sell signal and a close below the T line. So when you're up here in the overbought area. You can start putting your stops at places where it shouldn't be trading. But most importantly, you put it at the T-line. If it comes back down through the T-line, you want to be out of that trade. Because the probabilities when it closes below the T-line are that you're now in a downtrend. You want to close it out. Why go against the probabilities? So that you're not in a situation like this where you've given back all your profits and then some close out the trade because candlestick scans, as uh, Jeff will point out, are so simple that each day you're going to have more good trade setups than you can handle. But if you've got something that looks iffy or it's time to get out, most of us have what they call FOMO, the fear of missing out. We're afraid to take profits because it might go higher. What the candlestick analysis does for you is it tells you when the probabilities are now going against you, close it out, and then go to one of those other charts where the probabilities are much greater in your favor. So not only do the patterns tell you when to get in, they tell you when to get out and when to go short. Again, indecision, 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 a rounding top, a close below the T-line, that's when you start shorting. Uh, we recommended Monera, not or Moderna, 
not too long ago. Why? Because there was your kicker signal, which usually produces a very strong price move. How long do we hold this? Well, that was a bad hair day, but notice what happened that day. They didn't close it below the T-line. We've still got people in our, our uh, trading room still owning this because there's not been a sell signal and a close below the T-line yet. What this boils down to is the signals allow you to see when it's time to get in, and then the T-line allows you to stay in big trades well past the times where most of us would say, oh, I'm going to take my profits because I've got profits. That's not the, the successful way to invest. The successful way to invest is find a buy signal and they sell when it's time to sell. So we recommended here not too long ago because of the kicker signal, opened lower the next day. So if we didn't buy it on this day, probably wouldn't be buying right here because what's that telling us? The bulls aren't there yet. Where do the bulls show they're back in control? When it comes back up through this level, that's when you can be buying. And this one is still, uh, I think we took profits on it today. A bearish flutter kicker signal. If you're in an uptrend and they have enough strength to gap it down below the previous day's open, there's only one thing you want to do. Close it out. Now you're prepared that if they open it lower, what do we know is happening? You've got a bearish flutter kicker signal, which is a very strong sell signal. So there's just very simple analysis or simple rules of what human nature should not be doing or what human nature is showing you that they shouldn't be doing if a trend is still in existence. So we can use that same criteria. We recommended going short on Roblox today because look where the kind of the doji occurred right here on the T line. If it opened lower today, what was that telling us? We've got a bearish J hook pattern Weakness now can make this wave right here the same magnitude as this wave right here. Here is another one that was identified in the chat room. And I say the chat room. We've got two chat rooms that we have open all day long. We've got about 150 people in the room. But the nice thing about it is we've got plenty of traders in there that now know their signals and patterns. So they'll point out saying, look at QRB or TEB. It's done a gap up doji. What's our doji rule? If it opens positive the next day, we know that this gap up is working. You can be buying. So the chat rooms have a dual purpose. One, it, there's lots of people out there that are pointing out some very good trade setups. And two, if you're learning candlestick analysis, it's a perfect place to start uh, where you can ask questions. Somebody say, well, why would you be buying here? And somebody's gonna say, well, that's a doji gap up and it's trading positive. That tells you this breakout is working or why is that pattern breaking out or what is that pattern? So your learning process is ex expedited greatly because you've got people conversing back and forth, uh, pointing out different signals and patterns. You also know when to get out of a pattern. So you can see this was kind of a breakout right about this level, but look what happened yesterday. There was a bearish left-right combo in the overbought condition. A bearish left-right combo is a strong sell signal. So what's it telling us about this breakout level? It's not working. And then you've got a bearish, strong bearish signal followed by a gap down. What's that telling you? After the sell signal, they're trying to get out of this trade with great enthusiasm. Which means this downtrend is probably in progress. Where do you think the first likely target's gonna be? Probably back down to this level. What's your next target? Probably back down into this trajectory. 
So again, this is not rocket science. This just is merely identifying the signals and patterns that human nature uh, produces over the last 400 years. Now, I often have people say, well, I've, I've got candlestick signals on or candlestick charts up on my computer. I just don't know how to use them. And I always kind of illustrate that as the uh, Indian that left the uh, reservation, went to Harvard, graduated top of his class. Then he went to Wall Street and he was making a fortune when the tribe called him up and said, we want you to come back and be a uh, chief. And so his heritage was more important to him than making money. So the first day he was back on the reservation, he was in his teepee and all the elders came walking in, said, uh, how much uh, wood should we collect this year for the winter? He had no earthly idea. He said, uh, come back in an hour and I'll have an answer for you. They all filed out. So he flipped open his cell phone and he called the local weather station and said, what's the winter look like for this coming year? And he said, oh, about the same as last year. So when all the elders came back in, he said, all right, go out and collect the same amount of wood that we had last year, but collect an extra couple of weeks just to be safe. So they did. So after a few days, he uh, called the weather station again, just to be sure. And he said, weather look all right again? He goes, well, it's going to be a little bit colder than what we thought. He goes, oh, man. So he called all the elders back in and said, have everybody go out and collect another two weeks worth of wood. So they did. A few days later, he called the weather station again and said, is the weather still all right? Your indicators are okay. And they said, no, it's going to be a little bit colder yet. He goes, oh, man. So he called everybody back in, and they were getting kind of disgusted, like you probably are listening to this story. Um, he said, go out and collect six weeks worth of wood so we don't have to keep going through this. So they did. So wanted to check again. He called up the weather station and said, all right everything all right and they go oh no we're going to have one of the worst weather uh, winters we've ever had and the young chief said what the hell is wrong with your computer indicators you can't get things right they go oh we don't use computer indicators we watch the indians the more wood they collect the colder the winter is going to be so if you got stuff on your 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 charts and you don't know what they mean it doesn't really do you any good so anyways this is information that has been provided to us uh, for 400 years of what happens in human nature. So with that, we've got, and I'll let Jeff explain it over. You've got that all on the, uh, the software. Plus, we're gonna be doing a training uh, for the Metastock people right after the first of the year where we're gonna be showing people which signals and patterns you really wanna learn so that you're not wasting your time and energy on signals and patterns that aren't gonna ever occur uh, very often. Um, and so what helped me dramatically, well, yeah, the, right, the reason I find, found the 12 major signals is back then, I don't even think the uh, charts were on the internet yet. I would subscribe to a charting service out of California. It would arrive on Tuesday and I'd go back through the charts and say, all right, what was happening here at this peak? What was happening here at this valley? And as I went through, I'd start learning the signals and patterns, but I discovered that these 12 were the only ones that really uh, showed up all the time. So the, our training is gonna be pinpointing or kind of directing you right to which signals and patterns work the best constantly, which ones are the most strongest, and like anything else, not every trading strategy or trading process is gonna work. That means you also wanna identify when a trade's not working so you're out of it quickly so you can move on to a successful one. So that's about all I got. Are there any questions? Okay, Steve. Well, we don't have a lot of um, questions here in YouTube, but um, we did have Chentomos. Uh, he said, hello from Mexico. I follow your teaching, Steve Bigelow, and also Steve Prima. 
And then uh, uh, that's about it. Okay. For YouTube. So in any case, so we always get a lot of scan questions about how the scanning works and how the software works. And I think I'll, I'll take over a little bit and just show a little, uh, show the audience how that works. Okay, great. All right. Oh, uh, Jane wants to know, what is the T line? Do you want me to answer that or do you want to answer it? Uh, I can answer it. The T line is the eight exponential moving average. Okay. There's nothing secretive about it. The only thing that is relevant is that it works extremely well for identifying natural support and resistance level of human nature. So I tell people, don't take my word for it. Put it on your charts. You put it on your charts just the same way you would put on a uh, 50 days simple moving average or any other moving average. And see how often you, the price will bounce up off that level or that the further away you get from that level, the more relevant the uh, reversal signals uh, become. Okay, thank you very much, Steve. I'm gonna kind of take over for a little bit and just show the software okay. and the cool stuff that we designed with it. So I am looking at a um, actual chart of the Dow Industrials um, over, uh, and that's up to date through right now. Um, just to kind of go through exactly what is the indicators again uh, that are applied with the chart. You get the three exponential moving average, the eight exponential moving average. You also get the 200, the 20, and the 50 day simple moving average. Uh, those kind of those coordinate and co correlate with what Steve uses on his own charts. Yeah. In addition, uh, the stochastic 1233. Now, one of the things that we've done, I've applied, this is a meta stock chart, I've applied the Dow, uh, I've applied the indicators and what we call the expert advisor to the Dow Industrial. So you'll notice that like when we do have a bull kicker like we have here, it's automatically labeled for you, a doji. Here we had a bull bearish engulfing, here was a T-line crunch, here was a doji, a bearish engulfing, and a left-right bullish combo, a huge one happened back here on about 10.13, and it's been, the market's kind of bounced from that level ever since. But you can kind of see exactly how these uh, signals are working in real time. You'll notice here we had an engulfing bullish followed by a run up. Here you had a huge bearish engulfing. And these are just identified for you. In fact, as part of the program, I'm just gonna go into the slideshow real quick here. If I can get over there. And as part of the program, this is a, a picture of the box that we created. These are the prices that we're going to identify that are multiple patterns that Steve uses. So uh, you've got your fright pen, you've got your bullish bolt hold, your slow line, your T-line crush, crunch, the doji at the top, the doji best friend, life right bullish. All of those will be identified for you. Uh, in addition to the, those, you're going to get the single bar patterns like the doji, the bullish engulfing, the bearish engulfing. The important ones, the ones that uh, the, the, that I believe Steve calls them is the 12 major power signals. But those are the single day patterns are also in total, between the two lists, I think there's about 32 or 33 total different patterns that are identified on the chart. And by identified on the chart, I just mean that they're gonna show up, they're gonna be automatically labeled and identified so you know exactly where they're at. The other thing that we do as part of the add-on, which I think is really, really cool, is we actually can explain exactly what they are. So I'm gonna show you what I mean. I'm gonna go ahead and open up what we call an expert commentary in Metastock. And if I wanted to know what this left-right bullish combo meant, today we had an inverted hammer. You can see it's calling an inverted hammer and giving you a definition of that. But I can move to these other days. I'm gonna move back in time a little bit to this left-right bullish combo. And it's gonna say, uh, uh, this is exactly what a left-right bullish combo is. I'll scroll in a little bit, uh, I make the size of this text a little bit bigger so you can just kind of read it. This is a doji followed by a bullish engulfing. And look how big that bullish engulfing was. Um, with prices in the oversold uh, area, which is stochastic below 20, which is not a necessity, a doji forms followed by a bullish engulfing signal. So we're telling you exactly what makes this pattern, a doji, that's your indecisive day. That I love it how um, that's what you you're looking for that indecisive day followed by the decision. And well, that's a, what a lot of these patterns are. Like the Doji best friend, for example, is a Doji followed by a gap up. But we're going to tell you exactly what that pattern is that we're looking for. And we're also like in case you run a scan, we're going to give you some enhancements. So for example, the bear, 
bigger the bullish engulfing signal, this was huge, this was massive, the more powerful the new trend will be. And if the signal occurs at a major technical level, like a moving average, a FIB number, a trend line, et cetera, it'll be more powerful. It was also a belt hold, and you can read a little bit more about that, and it was also bullish engulfing. So all of the patterns that it actually identifies on that chart are going to be kind of explained to you as well. So uh, that's what we call the expert commentary. Basically, it's designed to help you kind of learn about the patterns and kind of understand exactly what's going on, okay? Um, uh, so CT4L trades, does Metastock software work with Thinkorswim? Well, you can use it with TD Ameritrade, but Metastock is a software program. It's what's going to run the explorations and the system tests. And unlike Thinkorswim, we're not necessarily, well, we're not at all a brokerage. So you can use Thinkorswim if you want. A lot of, actually, I use TD Ameritrade myself. So it is something that is compatible with whoever you want to trade. So thank you for that question. So uh, I'm also looking over here to see if there's any YouTube questions. There's not. The other question that we get a lot is how do I find these? And that's one other thing, since these are programmed, if I wanted to find one, it makes it relatively easy uh, with our Metastock scanning engine. We call it the, Ex the Explorer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how that works. It's really easy. I'm going to open up our Power Console using this P right here. And what I'm going to do is I've, I actually came to the scans. There's tons of scans that you can use in Metastock. But the ones that you install from the Candle Profit systems, I'll start with CPS. So I've just typed in CPS so I can just show you just the CPS scan. And you'll see there's a number of them. Like these are the Doji Dynamites. If I hover over Doji, Doji Dynamite, it's going to tell me what it's scanning for. So it'll, it'll look for any of the Doji at the tops, Doji Best Friends, the Left Right Bullish, Bearish Combos, the series of Doji, and et cetera, et cetera. It lists them all right there. Uh, you've get the, got the J-hook patterns. Again, if I hover over them, it'll tell you exactly what they're looking for with that. The major patterns, um, the power signals, the price patterns, and then there's two additional scans, like a U and one. They're called Universe and Universe Oversold Scan. Now these don't look pat for patterns, but they're helpful if you want to build a watch list of scans that you can run every single day. So, for example, if you're an optionable trader, one of the things that Steve re kind of recommends is uh, that you only trade stocks that ha are a minimum of five dollars and have an average volume traded of two hundred thousand shares per day. So if I wanted to run the CPS universe stock scan against all of the Oshawa stocks and make a list that I can scan every day, that's how I would do that. So that's how, and then we also have the universe oversold, which adds a stochastic requirement that the stock also be oversold. So those are the scans. There's uh, one, two, three, four, five, seven total scans. Um, I'm just going to run the, the CPS Doji Dynamite. One of the things that's really cool about where we get our data, we get our data from Affinitiv, they cover hundreds of exchanges globally. So I could come in here and I could run this scan against in, uh, stocks in Asia, Europe, Middle East, South America, North America, whatever I want to do. To kind of just show you real fast, I'm going to do a couple of index constituents. I'm going to do the Dow Jones Industrial, and I'm also going to do the NASDAQ 100 and the S&P 500. And so what I'll have it do is I'll have it start this exploration here. Let's go ahead and we're going to run through. You'll see how fast it's going. It's gone, gone through about 578 of the 526 stocks. And this is uh, the thing that's going to kind of determine how much time this takes is, how fast it can get the data. And keep in mind, we're broadcasting both to YouTube and to go to webinar. We're using a little bit of bandwidth. I would be surprised if you get a little bit faster reception when you're not broadcasting to YouTube. But I'd say for the it going through 526 stocks, it's going rather, rather quickly. So I've got a list uh, of the re of the results. Out of those 526, it's rejected 508 securities. So there's 18 that fit one of those patterns. And so again, as a trader, if I'm looking at 526 stocks, I've already gotten rid of all the ones that don't have it, uh, an opportunity that's detected by the scanner. And I can focus on just these 18 that do, okay? But in, in addition, if I'm looking for like a doji at, a, at the top, that's a doji followed by a gap down. I'm gonna have all of these stocks right here. Zoom Video had one, Tapestry, Salesforce, Qualcomm, all of these ones with that one in that column. If I want to find the, like Doji Best Friends, which is actually one of my favorite of Steve's Bigelow's uh, scans, that would be a gen couple cereal makers. General Mills had a Doji Best Friend today. 
Kellogg Company, uh, Lamb Weston, Lincoln National. And so I could open up just, if, if I'm looking for kind of a doji best friend, instead of looking at 526 stocks to look at them, there's the four that I can look at today based on my scan list. Um, and then you can simply just open up the chart, attach the expert advisor, kind of determine, maybe using the enhancements, which is the signal that you like the best. So, um, so Vane, we do have Canadian stocks. You can use uh, interactive brokers still. When you get a copy of Metastock, we do have Canadian data. A lot of our customers are from Canada. So thank you for the question. And the question, just in case you can't read it, is does Metastock work in Canada? Yeah, then yes. Uh, we cover uh, also kind of along those lines with the data that we get, we get the data from Refinitiv, which is owned by the London Stock Exchange. They're a big institutional provider of data, but we cover literally hundreds and hundreds of, like I think it's between two and 300 exchanges globally. It's quite a massive number, including all the major Canadian ones. So thank you for the question. All right, um, okay. I'm gonna go back in here to the slides. So again, here's this patterns that will automatically identify for you. These are the multiple day patterns. These are the single bar patterns. With it, it's gonna include those explorations, the expert advisor, which is gonna identify and label all those patterns and give you that commentary that tells you what the patterns are. And in total, there's 36 different patterns. So uh, this has been one of our most popular add-ons where you can see that we're on version two right now. Uh, one of the things I uh, actually, this actual add-on has been one of our most successful add-ons. Um, and in addition to that, it's actually won a couple of Reader's Choice Awards of it on its own. But as part of uh, the add-on, we had it reviewed in Stocks and Commodities. The first version was reviewed by Dennis Peterson. And then the second version was actually reviewed by Barbara Starr, and both of them really liked it. I'm very, very proud of this add-on. But it's been one of our most popular. It's been well-reviewed. It's been well-received. And it really, really does help you uh, um, find really good stocks that have really good patterns on them. And I think that's why it's been so popular. So normally, that add-on's $499. If you buy it as part of the webinar that we're doing today, we're going to do hunt $399 on it. Okay. Uh, in addition, though, what we're, we're also gearing up to do a very special training class that we're going to be doing with Steve Bigelow on December 3rd. That's Saturday. It's a few Saturdays from now. I think it's not sa this next Saturday, but the one two after that. It's coming right up. It's going to be the Saturday after Thanksgiving. Uh, but no, the, the Saturday after the Saturday after December 3rd. It's on a calendar. Okay. But we're gonna sit down and he's gonna do a six hour training class. He's gonna talk about how he uses and does market trend analysis to identify what the market's doing. He's gonna be talking about candlestick trade setups, successful trade entries, when to close a trade, uh, what confirming indicators he used that, like, that, to stay in a position. So that's available. We're gonna be, I'll be talking a little bit more about it. He's also gonna talk about his 12 major signals and how to use them effectively. Uh, he's going to talk about high profit pattern moves, how to put in stop losses, which is really, really important when you're trading. Like um, risk reward is always kind of a very important component to a successful trading. And uh, which confirming indicators that you can use to improve the probabilities of the trend reversal. So it's going to be a six hour session. It's going to be, oh, I fixed that. Hold on just a second. <laughs> It's going to be Saturday, December 3rd. I swear I fixed that. At 10 a.m. We'll just start right there. Okay. And normally that's $8.99. It's going to be $499 if you just buy the training. So as part of the webinar special. What we're actually going to do, though, is we're going to do two more things that are better. We're going to do the Candle Profit System 2.0. We're going to include the boot camp training called the Candlestick Training Boot Camp, which is that six hour class that's going to be available and we're going to record on December 3rd. If you can't make it on December 3rd, or even if you can, we are going to record that session and make it available for you uh, on our website, in our download, in our uh, login section for training uh, in perpetuity, <laughs> forever, okay? But in addition to that, we're also gonna throw in our candlestick training course, another class that we did with him that's another four hours called the uh, Candle Profit System Training Course. So you get the boot camp. that's gonna be the live class. In the meantime, you can watch the training course uh, 
We'll also include Metastock real-time, the Zenith market data, the Unleash of Power Metastock, and normally all of this would actually be $22,000 of value. Uh, but what we're going to do uh, with that re recorded class, what we're going to do is we're going to knock the price down to $698. You can do that by calling us at 1-800-882-3040, or you can also visit us at metastock.com slash sales chat, or you can also sign up for it at Candlestick Forum D. So um, not really... Oh, so I made those. Okay, I know what happened. I actually added the free training to this site, but I didn't refresh it. <laughs> so it's not. Anyway, so the total value, you're going to get all of that for just $6.98, included another training session that we did just a couple years ago. It's a great value. Uh, it includes um, access to Metastock if you need it, our award winning software program. It includes the ability to have the add on, all the scanning and the testing, or the scanning and the uh, alert and the notation of charts and the explanations of them. It's going to include that candlestick um, training boot camp that we're going to do on December 3rd. It's also going to include the, uh, the recorded sessions that we did a couple years ago. So it's a great value. $698. Call us at 800-882-3040. Visit us at metastock.com slash sales chat, or you can order it online at Candlestick Forum D as well. Okay, well, it says, what's the 30-day money-back warranty? Um, the so for the add-on, if you just buy the add-on, we'll give you a money-back guarantee on the add-on, uh, which means you can evaluate it. If you're happy with it, keep it. Otherwise, you can get a 30-day money-back guarantee. So that's what that is. It, uh, as far as if it's good for option traders, uh, most of our, uh, well, I wouldn't say most, 40% uh, of our Users, our Metastock users that actually use options and trade with options. Uh, this is really good. Now, where this is going to be helpful for options, Ellis, because that's a really good question, is it's going to help you determine the best underlying. Because a lot of times what you want to do, one of the biggest questions you need to answer about options trading is, what stock am I going to take an option on? And with the scanning and the ability to find stocks that are primed for a bullish trade, that's where it's going to be most helpful for you. So hopefully that answered your question. So uh, in any case, give us a call, 800-882-3040. Uh, visit online with us at metastock.com slash sales chat or at metastock.com slash co-op candlestick forum D to sign up for it. Thanks for coming today. I hope uh, you enjoyed it. Uh, I want to say thank you for speaking um, again with us. Uh, uh, we'll see you next time. Stay healthy. Stay well. Hi, Kelly Clement here from Metastock. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and I hope you found it instructive and informative. If you did, what I'd like to invite you to do is go ahead and like and subscribe. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. It helps us a great deal, and it helps us bring you more awesome content like today's video. So go ahead and like and subscribe, and keep on watching.